As I build my coaching business, I want to know how to effectively serve clients and make more money doing it. This podcast will pull back the curtain to reveal exactly how successful coaches are building their empires. Join me as I engage with top coaches from all over the world to discover their secrets. No theatrics and no theory, just real life strategy. My name is William Winterton, and this is Coaching Success Radio. Hey, what's up, Coaching Success Radio? Okay, before we start the podcast today, I want to give a quick overview of what this future Coaching Success Story series is all about. Uh, I've had several people ask me, and several of you are wondering, like, what is going on? Okay, so we're still going to have all the experts come on to the show. I'm still going to give a bunch of content to help you grow your coaching business. But this series is a little bit, uh, a little bit different, and here's, here's kind of what's happening. About a month and a half ago, I sent out a Facebook message to a whole bunch of different Facebook communities of coaches. And I asked anybody who was in the coaching business for less than a year if they would be interested in joining me on a podcast. Uh, just to give them a platform to speak, give them an opportunity to practice their skills, practice their, uh, their stories, tell a, little about, tell a little bit about themselves, the struggles, the challenges, things they're uh, finding success with, ways they're getting clients, uh, just all the stuff that new coaches want to know, right? And so I think you and the audience are look, looking at this and saying, here's an opportunity to hear from people who are right where you're at, who are building their coaching business from scratch, or they're, they're in it for a short amount of time, but they're trying to get bigger. Um, you know, they're doing the same things that you're doing. The challenges are the same. And ultimately, I feel like everybody's really on the same side in this here. We're trying to figure out how to get the world to improve through coaching. And I think 99.9% of the coaches I've talked to fall in that category of genuinely wanting to make the world better, which this is an awesome industry, in my opinion. I've been doing a lot in my life, and this is like by far the most rewarding. So what I, again, I wanted to do is I wanted to reward people, give them an opportunity to share their stories. Uh, I had a whole bunch of people <laughs> apply. I had probably over 100, 150 uh, different uh, responses to the Facebook posts. And out of that, I've had dozens and dozens of interviews, which we're going to be sharing really rapid fire throughout the next couple of months here. So you're going to see a lot of episodes coming out, a lot of conversations with newer coaches. And most of this is done just to give new coaches an opportunity to start practicing their voice and getting their voice out there because when you're getting started online, especially online, but really anywhere in the coaching world where you have to be in front of people and speaking and sharing, it is super critical to have your unique, genuine, authentic voice. And I'm saying that because I've, I've run into a lot of problems with coaches who have tried to create a persona for themselves that doesn't fit. Right? They could be a very uh, reserved individual who's trying to be big and exciting and a big Tony Robbins kind of a thing, uh, but that's not who they are. And they're not even, not even close to that. They're, they're a much uh, different tone and sound. It's not that they don't know what they're doing and it's not that they're not even exciting. It's just they don't have to be up and be like Tony Robbins all the time. They don't have to be like, oh my gosh, this is so, you know, like, I, I don't, I can't do a Tony Robbins impression. But you get what I'm saying. Like, you don't have to be like, a level 10 if really you hover at a level four. Um, you do have to have some energy. You do have to be able to carry your message. You do have to be clear. You have to know what you're talking about. You have to be specific, uh, which audience you're talking to, but you have to be you. You have to be 100% authentically who you are. And that's what's gonna resonate with your audience way more than any other tactic or, or strategy that anybody else can come up with. The audience that you are talking to has to see you and trust you before they ever make a decision to go ahead and purchase a coaching program from you or to ever even get on a call with you. So that's part of what this opportunity is, is to get on the podcast and share your story, share your, your journey as a coach, where you've been, the challenges, the struggles, and all of that stuff, and give you a chance to speak in your own voice and share it with an audience of coaches. So that's what this is all about. And so not every Everybody who comes on here is polished, and that's perfectly fine. I'm much more interested in real, raw, and authentic. So on that note, I have an amazing guest who's coming in today. His name is Darren, and he is a coach. He's a relationship coach, and he's just getting started, and he hasn't even dialed in 100% what he's doing yet, but man, he's got so much passion for what he's doing. He's super excited about working with relationships. He's had a lot of coaching experience. He's had his certifications. He's just ready to launch, and he was brave enough to come on to here. It's his first podcast he's ever done. And I think he did fantastic, and I'd love to share his story. So without further ado, here is Darren Wright. I've never been to New Jersey. I've been to, I think, Pittsburgh is the closest I've been to you guys. So uh, how, how are things out there for you right now? 
it's, it's pretty good. I live in Hoboken, so it's very just across the river from um, Manhattan. So in a way, it doesn't feel like I'm in New Jersey. It just feels like I'm in New York because it's just a very short, short, short bus ride, and then I'm in the city. And and you're not originally from Jersey, are you? No, no. <laughs> where where are you from? I'm originally from the UK. I'm English, and I'm from a small town in the middle of the country called in, uh, sorry called Kettering. So what made you decide to come over to the United States? Well, I thought I'll try this online dating. I've been, oh, hearing, okay. I've been hearing about it for, for, for a little while. And I was like, well, you know, I'm on my own. Let's see how it, how it goes. I joined one of these sites and uh, I um, picked out a few, a few uh, women. And then eventually I was a, I met... I went my future wife about three months after we'd been um, exchanging phone calls and, and it went from there and two and a half years later, I moved here. Wonderful. So, uh, so she brought you over and said, okay, this is, this is, this is officially happening now yeah, right she, over here. She didn't want to come to the dreary weather of London. And I thought, well, I, here you get good summers there and et cetera. And I wanted to start a new life abroad and that's what, that's what happened. Before you were a coach, since you just started in that field, what were you doing uh, kind of before and getting you transitioned into becoming a coach? Well, at the time when I was living in London, I was a career coach. Oh, okay. Working with, uh, with, um, with, stu with students and, with, uh, and, and, and young adults. Okay. Uh, careers, choices, and uh, what sort of uh, um, jobs they wanted to go into. And actually, one of my co-workers uh, was telling me about life coaching. Mm -hmm. He was sort of dabbling into looking in, into this um, life coach, and I thought, I'll have a look. And uh, so I did a few sessions with her, and I thought, I like the idea of this because I've always liked the idea of counselling or helping somebody in, in some way. And... Um, I found it very, very productive. I also found it you could get more, more results. It could be, mm -hmm. it could be a lot more quicker and a lot more healthier, helpful if you um, uh, did did the coaching. And it was a, it was a quite a long process. Um, I uh, did very various jobs, but I was always, I always had it in my mind that I wanted to become a life coach. Good. I did some general general coaching for uh, you know for um, for myself. I did a, a sort of a um, a written course, but that gave me some insight into coaching. But I knew I needed to do something more practical. And eventually, I uh, through networking, I uh, met with what was later to become my uh, instructor. Mm -hmm. So I did a six month online course. Which brought me on to eventually onto the ACC route, and I'm certified ICF ACC life coach in uh, in June last year. Yeah. So, so you went in, you got your certification, and then how long after that before you? I mean, did you start coaching while you were getting uh, certified, or did you did you do any coaching, life coaching of any kind before you were fully accredited or anything? Or Yes, I did it while I was doing the course and uh, all the way through until uh, I was certified. Where did the relationship coach oh, that was, piece take off? That was a quite a long process. And I mean, finding that uh, that is a difficult p problem people have is, is, is trying to figure out their niche. And I was figuring it, I was thinking initially I wanted to be a disability coach, which, but I thought, mm, I'm not sure that's that's don't think that's going to be for me and i thought well I, I like people in i like people in general i like relationships and it kind of went from there and then i was trying to figure out my um my website what was the photos and what what, what how it was designed and so then i was uh, started writing uh, blog posts i think i've done about a dozen now but on facebook and now I'm just, just networking. I've joined the New York chapter, the ICF, because, um, as I said, I'm a relationship coach. But, um, and people tend to think of it as just dating. 
Uh, I think that's only the part of it. I'm looking at dating, marital couple coaching, and family, mm-hmm. as in extended families. Uh, I found that um, some of the coaching sessions I had was clients who were having issues with some members of their family. And I actually enjoyed helping them. Uh, in, 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 uh, I found it really exciting. And, and as I also find I'm helping people with, with, with their dating. And um, also, I've recently had a client who um, it, she had issues with her daughter. I've, I mean, I've also, on my website, they've got friends and work relationships. But um, those, the, the, the three I mentioned there, they're probably the, the, um, the main ones. That I'm... I know you're just getting started. So what are some of the things that you've tried uh, that have been successful for you to get these clients that you have now? What I've been doing is I've been actually just talking to people. Mm-hmm. In, gen- in general, day-to-day world, world we are, I'm just having conversations with people and uh, not, it's just getting to know people and, uh, you know, you've been a friendly, nice guy. So how do you, if I were to meet up with you somewhere, let's say you and I were, were I don't know, at the gym or something like that, how do you talk to somebody and let them know what a relationship, what do you tell them that you do? Uh, I have been a little uh, experimental because I think, uh, as I said, it's, it is talking to people, but I don't think I don't think just saying the relationship coach is uh, is you don't want to put people off, right? And if, and if there is something I detect that they might that they need help on in in in, in my my area, then uh, I would offer my my help. I'd like to ask you specifically why you went from coaching uh, as you were in, in the UK and coming over here as relationship coach. What was it about relationships that made you, I, I know you had the life coaching, but what was it that that was the area you wanted to go into? I just find it more fulfilling. And obviously, and uh, career coaching is, is very specific and precise in some respects. And I found I, need, I want to do something a bit more varied. And when I first dabbled into life coaching, it was just general. I wasn't, no, no, I didn't really know what niche I was going to go into until, right. the, until the last, um, let's say last October, October okay. 2018, I would say is when I thought, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And uh, like I say, there are f- friends, you know, I've, I've also discuss friend. I've even I've wrote I see what are uh, friends and work relationships and I've, I, I try to write a post generally on on at least three of those every every couple of weeks so there's always something on something else or mm-hmm. something about interracial relationships I've done something about uh, relationships that are unbalanced mm-hmm. as in one has more control of, over the over the other person I've talked about May December relationships where uh, there's a, one partner is a lot older than the other one. I've 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 tried to cover quite a bit. I mean, I've just I've talked about friends who are um, if they fall out, how do they reconnect? And it, and you'd be surprised because how um, fairly simple it is to come up with our, our with our ideas to write about. Um, when I first started and when I first first saw the what people were putting on 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 our what Facebook groups? Like how how do you keep how do you come up with your ideas? And and you realise that you know it's not that hard. You you keep you think something comes out, something comes to you in your head, and you just write it down and put it somewhere safe. And you got I have a, a fairly um, substantial list, and I'll pick mm-hmm. which things I want to do. And uh, it takes you know it takes a few days, and you know. Yeah, I'm very and uh, I, I it is it is it is, ner- it is nerve wracking because you're writing. So I mean, not many of us have probably come from a come from a writing background. So, and that's something you you learn to you what you realize is it's not is you you becomes multifaceted skills. You just you're coaching, right. writing. You're networking, you're uh, promoting yourself, you're um, becoming more technology advanced. You're trying to, it's very, very involved. 
there's a lot, a lot of skills going on because when you go into coaching, you think, oh, I'll just talk to somebody. And but there's talking and there's talking, and you know, you right? Got to bring the person, get the person's um, feelings and thoughts up. In you know, and uh, then we see how we how they can solve their their own problems. And what I also like about it is because you give them some sort of project, like homework or something they can work mm -hmm. on. Times the sessions to uh, you meet, eat again, and then uh, then you see how how well they're doing, or if something didn't quite go well, where well, well, we can talk about it and see if we can improve on that. And then it's good to see well after a few sessions how well they've come. Something to keep track and, and go. I think this is. Uh... I think this is all just kind of encapsulates what a new coach goes through. I've heard that, I don't know what the stat is, but something like 90% of your coaching business is working on your business and marketing and all that stuff. And 10% of it, if that is actually having that coaching dialogue. And I think you would agree with that. It sounds like you're just constantly working and networking and marketing and reaching out and connecting and speaking and sharing and talking and, and, handing out business cards, all this stuff. And then you have your clients that you work with and that's the fun, right? That's, that's the stuff, right? Yes. But it's all that process getting that. And I think a lot of new coaches, just like you very, uh, you put very well is it's at the beginning, you don't think about all that stuff. It's like, I'm just going to go in and coach. No, you, just think, you think you're just going to sit, sit with somebody one-on-one -on -one or whatever and you just talk and yeah. No. That's easy. How hard can that be? You know, it's like, yeah. So, Darren, I, I just appreciate you taking the time coming on here, and uh, I just want to thank you again for for raising your hand and doing your first podcast with me. It was great. Thank you very much, William. Wow, that was awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in and checking us out. New episodes are coming out every few days, including lots of conversations with massively successful coaches sharing their secrets with you. So be sure to subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel so that you don't miss out. And if you're looking for a way to start making serious money from your coaching, you need to check out my free training. It's at williamwinterton.com. I lay out the step-by-step -step on how to start making five figures a month in the next 60 days. Check it out, williamwinterton.com. I'll see you next time.